Hi friends, it's Sarah from ruffles.rainboots.com and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I cannot wait to share it with you. Everything you see here was made in two days using a fully enclosed laser and cutting machine. I'm grateful X-Tool sent this to me and I'll be sharing not only these tools, but a bit of a review and unboxing today so that you can see how easy it is to use the laser cutter, engraver, scorer, and the blade cutting system. So this is what our box looks like. It is the M1 fully enclosed laser. But I'm going to first set up what I believe is a necessary accessory. If you're similar to me and you have oodles and oodles of stuff in your craft room, it looks like a craft store, this is going to come in handy. This is called the Honeycomb Riser. It's got two pieces, very easy to set up. You'll see we do it in about three minutes. We're going to unwrap the enclosed acrylic pieces. Now these are the color they are so that they are eye protected, which means when you are cutting something larger and outside of the box, your eyes are safe. That's a score one, right? So now for the actual tool itself. I just love that sound. This is what the front of the box looks like. So inspiring with all those projects. Now, when you get your box, it may or may not have the same exact items in there. I selected a material package and a rotary tool, but this is the money. Here is the cool little system. I'm just going to open it here and show you that what comes inside is a mini materials kit, a thank you note, and things you both would expect like a power tool and not expect like a venting system. So I will be talking about additional venting systems. This is a little grease and the blades you need for the cutter. This is part of the ducting as well and a clamp to put that on. So I'm going to show you the inside of the actual machine here. These prisms are how you raise up items, which is really cool. So you have this array here. We're going to be able to take a live picture of our workspace which is really cool. So we went ahead and set up the ducting and smoke assist off camera, and now it's time I had to go see about this software. So similar to cutting machines, we are going to be using a proprietary software called XCS. I'm not a huge fan of proprietary software because we are at their whims, but I kind of tooled around in here, looked at some projects before I got started with mine, just to see what they have available. I also went to the shop because um, I like to shop and I picked up some additional plywood and acrylic for future projects. Back into the tool, it's ridiculously easy to use. I don't like that this layer thing can never go away, but we'll see what happens in the updates. It's very simple to import SVGs, you can go into your settings up in the top left and choose inches. You can also choose a couple settings in here, which may matter to you. Primarily, you can also check for updates. This tool is getting updated a lot. And you can see I actually connected it to my computer first. And you can see now our workspace is showing on my computer. Now, when you open it, I'm going to be testing the blade cutter first, because if it's not going to replace something else in my craft room, I wouldn't recommend it. We're gonna remove both the sticky from the bottom and top. We're gonna to press that in, put on our leather. You can see not very well, because I was super excited. And then close the lid or hit this refresh button to now see a live version of our workspace. Similar to other proprietary software, you can group things together, you can layer things, you can send front to back, you can align them. It is a very simple tool to use. Now I do have a pop-up menu over here that will go away when I click off the actual items I was moving around. I'm going to select blade cut and PU leather and now I don't know how to get that menu back. Ah, there it is. It's telling me it's going to cut. It's using the reference material from Xtool. Now framing, I'll show you that in just a second. It's more impressive on wood, so I'm going to set that aside for now but when you frame it and you send it to your machine it'll give you an estimated processing time over in the bottom left you hit start on the software you press the button on the device right here in front to get going and it cut this in 13 seconds when it started cutting i realized i actually forgot to size the earrings so i'm gonna hit refresh and 
I don't know, maybe size them to what I actually want. So for this particular thing, when you're making earrings, it's very similar when you cut leather with a Cricut or other cutting tool, you're gonna make four if you want a front and back and glue those together, or you can make fronts and backs separately. So that's what I'm gonna do. You can see this is the size I want. It did cut the little hole for the earring hardware as well. Look at that. I'm gonna see how it does on something a little tighter and I'm gonna put these heart cutouts in on the PU leather as well. Again, I think it took about 18 seconds. Now, when I see this, I look a little, a little, you know, worried, but nope, it cut it perfectly. Now I have a little heart that I can do something with too. If you've never put together a pair of PU leather earrings, you will need some earring findings as well as some jump rings. You will also need two pair of needle nose pliers and I like to assemble anything fabric with E6000 fabric fuse. Now this is because if you use super glue, it would be very, very stiff and uncomfortable. This allows the leather to move. I'll apply that with a paintbrush in just a second, but first I wanna pop out the little leather pieces that didn't come out all the way. So you can see there are holes there. So I'm just gonna pop out those leather pieces on all four of my components. Now I'm going to put an insane amount of glue. You don't need that much glue, so I'm going to clean that off, take a little bit of glue, and I'm going to just paint this on, making sure that I get it onto the tip of the heart and all the way around the cutout piece. If you're not using a cutout and you're just combining four earrings that are the same, you don't have to worry about this. But if you are worrying or working with a cutout, only paint the cutout. Otherwise, you'll have a glue section in the middle. You can also put vinyl on the inside of that heart in a contrasting color if you'd like, but I kind of like how the back of that looks. So you have a good bit of time with this glue. Do not worry about everything sticking in place immediately, which is both good and bad. I'm just pressing it around all the way around. You can even run a brayer over it if you would like. I'm going to assemble the second one. And here's a tip. I don't care what anybody says. You want to add weight to anything you are gluing. So I'm going to put something flat and clean. This is a new little wood round I got at Target. And I'm gonna put something heavy on top of that. Bloop, that scrap of paper. The next day, or maybe it's that evening because I had to wait for it to dry, I'm going to just use the needle nose pliers to twist them open, not pull. I'm gonna put the jump ring on and close it the same way. Hold with one and turn, twist with the other. You'll see here, just twist it. I like to put, run my finger over that clasp center just to make sure it won't catch on anything, that it's perfectly flat. Next up, I'm going to just hook this jump ring onto my earring back and I'm going to use my needle nose pliers to press the ball right under the ball right to the earring back and that locks it in place. Earrings are something that is so simple to do. This whole entire craft, aside from the waiting time, actually took me eight minutes. That's it. No kidding. Eight minutes. So they're very cost effective in case you want to sell these. Now, if I had one gripe uh, about the entire setup, and I have a very robust setup between what Xtool has sent me and what I've purchased, I would say it's the software. So similar to other custom software, it is currently rather limited. Does that mean you cannot design in it? Absolutely not. I've already designed free files in there for you all. If you are used to using Lightburn, which is a laser software, you have the ability to import a G-code. There are advancements being made there. Now, I'm a designer. I use things like Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop in my cut files, sublimation, and all other forms of crafting. So it's a little bit of a learning curve for me because I tend to get used to what I'm used to. In XCS, I have been able to design files and the best part about designing inside of XCS is that you can save your settings. Let me say that again. You can save your settings, power, speed, etc. The XCS software overall is good, but if you find it to be frustrating with things that I have found to be frustrating, I would say wait. 
And the reason for that is much like blade cutter software, we have been exposed to many different updates through that software. So let's talk about what's not frustrating. It's easy to import designs, it's easy to manipulate designs relatively, and it's easy to indicate scores versus cuts. This is a free file on ruffles.rainboots.com. All I'm doing is inputting it and telling it to score. I'm adding an additional circle around the outside edge and telling it to cut it. So if you get as frustrated as I did in trying to find the two layers, Click on whatever one you're adding and change it to move to a new layer and that's easy to click on it so you can make sure one is score and one is cut. So I'm going to choose laser cut here because we're going to be cutting and scoring with the laser. I added a triangular prism into my base so that I can put this piece of plywood right on in there. So it's hard to see, but through those cutouts, you actually see lines of black. Those are the triangular prisms that, include it, that are included. I like to auto measure every single time I'm cutting as well. And here is when I realized, oops, I forgot to make an ornament hanger for this little summer ornament. So I'm going to put a circle here. Then I second guess myself and say, no, I need another circle to cut out of that, right? Uh, spoiler alert, you don't. But you can select them, align them, and group them just to indicate that those both need to be cut. You see how they say score over in the right? We're going to change that to cut after we size it. And then our entire piece is ready for framing. Remember earlier I said framing is a key portion of this project plan? That's what we're gonna do right now. When you frame, you're going to see the laser mark out. Let me show you again. You see the laser marking out where we're gonna be cutting? That's what it does. Very helpful not to waste material. So now I'm gonna hit start in the bottom left-hand side. It says that'll take about three minutes. When you set it to your, or send it to your machine, you hit start on the software and the machine to get it going. Here's a little look inside the machine through the safety glass on top, hence why our world is colored orange. It scored it beautifully, and you can actually, this portion, let me get over here, is actually cutting the wood. So why I love this tool is it is a fully enclosed laser, meaning safety is a priority. If you're like me and you have little kids in the house or grandkids, that is key. So now that we have it open here, look at this. It, it is, I can't explain the detail. It is so insane, the detail it's able to get. Hey, remember when I said you needed two circles? I didn't need two circles. There they are. <laughs> One would have sufficed. Okay, so now on how to do this, I did it, um, a little test on the back. So I wanted to see if this would spread. This is the three millimeter basswood plywood from X-Tool. Absolutely just don't start painting it because let me see if you can see here, it's just spreading all over the place. So we'll wipe that off, turn it over and add a layer of Mod Podge. You can also add polyurethane sealant here, but I like to paint on top of Mod Podge. Once that is dry with my little pink heat gun that you all love so much, I'm going to water down some paint to get different depths of paint and just start painting. I used a pretty small paintbrush to put the color down and also add some shading. I like to dry in between each because I'm a klutz and I could possibly, no, I will more than likely drag that paint across the entire thing. Now, I know I'm going to get asked about this, but to do anything really small with rock painting, with painting in general, go on Amazon and buy eyeliner brushes. I can't even tell you how awesome those things are. It's perfect. It helps non-painters become really good painters. I'm just saying. I decided to paint that back before I sealed it and that is it for this little quick craft. Okay, so let's talk about what the M1 can cut. With laser cutting, it can cut wood, paper, acrylic in many colors except for blue and clear. It can also cut fabric, felt, leather, and even rubber. I'm excited to try silicone in that machine. As for blade cutting, it can cut most standard blade cutter uh, materials like paper, vinyl, both HDB and permanent. It can cut sticker paper, fabric, uh, felt, as well as PU leather, and I've also done faux suede. 
With regard to the engraving tool with the laser, it can do wood, stone, glass, plastic, leather, faux suede, chipboard, and even metal. Again, I'm very excited to test every single one of these materials, even though I've tested plenty already. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at the X-Tool M1 laser cutter, engraver, and blade cutting machine. As always, I sincerely appreciate you being here. Please share, please give this video a like, and please subscribe for more crafty fun.